Mm -hmm. uh, Catherine, welcome to this business spotlight on a Wednesdays. I am so excited to talk to you for, for multiple reasons. Thank but you, Jeff. I'm very excited to to um, to meet you and to have an opportunity to learn and share about your business. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's an honor to be here and I really appreciate it. Yay. So um, please tell us a little bit about yourself and then tell us about Coco Bean and Nut. Okay. Well, um, my name is Catherine Nelson. I'm the owner and operator of Coco Bean and Nut Grain Free Granola. Um, and we've been a granola company for six years. Um, I also dabble in voiceover and things like that, but um, I've been focusing on grain-free granola for all this time. And um, basically we sell in about 50 stores in Minnesota, a few stores in Wisconsin. And yeah, and um, it's basically a nut and seed mix. So I started making it for a friend who is trying to find a low carb breakfast cereal and uh, just took the oats out of the, the granola I knew how to make. And then um, it just ended up being kind of an on-trend, grain-free, gluten-free breakfast option. So um, so a lot of people, a lot of customers, they the number one way they eat it is they put it on their yogurt as a topper. Um, it has a really nice balance of carbs, proteins, and fat. So it's just a really nice add-on for a lot of um, dishes, like as a supplement. So like you could put it on your salad, you could put it on like squash soup, um, so many different uses. So. You can oh, even make this food healthier. <laughs> yeah. I always wonder, like, how do people get ideas? Like, how do businesses start? So, for example, the the Cliff Bar, right? It happened while the owner he was biking and he ran out of food and he almost he was having such a hard time. He started making them in his own kitchen. Yeah. And so right. it's just really. So, how did you? I mean, where did the idea even come from? Right? It came from your friend, but how did you decide? I'm going to make or no one sell it. I uh, yeah. I mean. It was kind of one of those things where I was a I was a big nerd when I learned how to make granola, where it was like, I I want to bake something that is, you know, you can get a nice big chunk out of it, but it it'll like crumble in your hand when you make it. And so that was or when you when you try to break it. Um and I just kind of had a knack for making something like that and to have my friend who had this need I was like okay well what simulates oats okay sunflower seeds are similar in size so there are like eight dry ingredients in the in my granola but um so sunflower seeds are a big component of it and um and so it was kind of like, well, this is a nice substitution. And a lot of times when people try it, when I'm demoing at stores, they still think there's oats in it. So it's kind of like, you know, a nice simulation for, you know, people don't feel like they're losing out on what they love. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, and then when she tried it, she had all of our friends try it and they were like, well, you should totally sell this. And then um, kind of, yeah, so we went to Uganda like years ago and I met a bunch of entrepreneurs there and it was really cool to see how they were making something out of not a whole lot, you know, and having these small businesses. So I thought, well, you know, I'm a communication studies major. I don't know anything about business, but I'm going to try this. So I started out at um, farmer's markets and kind of went from there. Yeah. That is such a cool story. This is why I love entrepreneurship and people who create create products like yourself. It's it's very often that moment, a stroke of insight, mm -hmm. and how it comes together. But you have to take the risk. You have to say, yes, I'm going to do this. Right. Yep. And you're constantly walking into the unknown, you know, because, you know, as yeah, you just have to take the next step because if you want to go further you just have to even the next step to have a conversation with somebody because a lot of times the at least in the food community i feel like we learn a lot from each other so like how i learned how to get my nutrition labels was from someone else and you know there's just all these things you learn that you wouldn't learn just by reading it on the internet necessarily because you know minnesota could be different from alabama or you know new york or something like that very different. And I, I love that there's you make such a clear correlation on your website 
Bet the, the happiness that we feel is so closely correlated with the health and how we feel inside. And yeah. we really, there is this new world that we're living in. We're really mindful of what we put in our bodies. Mm -hmm. Yes. It is a temple that needs to be taken care of so we can do the work in this world that needs to be done. And we all feel better when we ingest better quality product, when we ingest something a little bit more healthier, it's not going to give us that sugar high after mm -hmm. we drop. So I, I just really, I really love that. And I, I bet you hear that from all of the customers in the stores that are buying this. Yeah, a lot of times people will say, I love your granola because it's not too sweet and it has a softer mouth feel, like it doesn't hurt your teeth when you eat it. Um, and I think I can attribute that to, we use honey and then coconut oil. So the coconut oil makes it a little softer um, but I've also had a lot of people who are diabetics who say, you know, when I look at the sugar content on your bag, you're the only one I can have because it's low enough that, you know, I can have a serving of it with my yogurt and not feel like my sugar's going to spike. So that's incredible. Do you think you, like, you filled a hole in the marketplace that, that was there that didn't, no one even knew that it was? I, I do think it fills a hole, even though, you know, grain-free granola is kind of a food category now. Um, when I was starting out, yeah, it there was only one other one that I saw in grocery stores. And then as soon as I got into grocery stores, I noticed there were more and more from different parts of the country. And actually yesterday, I just had a Zoom call with a grain-free granola maker in Georgia. <laughs> it was just starting out. So, yeah. So so you're also supporting others on their journey. How, how incredible. Yeah, it's well, it's just great because, I mean, even though I've been doing this for six years, I can learn from them just as much as they can from me. And um, yeah, uh, that is, you know, there is I've been eating a lot of humble pie um, in the last in the last year because I was semi in my mind successful in the past decade doing this work doing the things that traditionally used to work and then the social media came and i just lost it because i didn't want to spend time with it i had this like pushback and i left i unfollowed everyone and i left so it is interesting how um i am i'm back being a student and being so humble in, in learning, like there's always, I thought I, I had it figured out, like that's it. And from now on, it's just, you do the thing. And mm -hmm. it's such a powerful reminder that especially in the entrepreneurship, some of the biggest companies have gone out of the business by not being nimble and humble mm -hmm. and really continuing to learn and evolve and also support others on their journey because it is such a community enterprise. And there's this, whether it's karma or, just general intention, how beautiful it is that you do that. That just warms my heart. Thank you. Oh, yeah, thanks. But honestly, it's because I was welcomed into the food community. I mean, I don't know if you've ever um, introduced, interviewed um, Gastola Granola, but I was in a kitchen when she was just moving out of it because she was expanding. And um, there is a handful of granola makers in the Twin Cities, and we're like all friends you know, and like, it wasn't just me that started that, like, you know, I, I literally got together with my other granola maker friend yesterday for coffee. So like, it's just really fun to be able to like, not have that competition. It's just more like we're commiserating together of like the ups and downs of the roller coaster of entrepreneurship. Oh, I, I love that. And that's why I love the, the, the kind of work that we're doing here is spotlighting people and connecting, uh, connecting one another and finding ways in which we can support each other. That makes me so incredibly happy. So now you're in 50 stores mm -hmm. uh, in Minnesota and multiple in Wisconsin. What is, you know, is this like a Spanx goal? Like, do you have the, the wall for like, I'm going to be Spanx of granola? Oh, man. I, that is a question I've been trying to ask myself for the last six months. Um, so I kind of hit a wall. Um, I just, to be completely transparent, last summer at this time, I was launching on Amazon and I had a consultant that helped me and he did his best, but it's such a saturated market in, um, in that category so it it didn't go well for me and it really made me reevaluate what I wanted to do um so I'm kind of 
seeing, you know, if I want to pull back, if I should try to do more wholesale, you know, um, try to just, you know, cause I was more on like a linear path, thought path, like, okay, you do this and this and this and this, and then you just get big, you know? And it's like, it's not like that, especially after COVID and yeah. And like, I've noticed that so many people who are my peers have gone back to farmer's markets and that's where they're doing a lot of selling and I haven't done that yet. Um, so right now I'm just kind of in a holding pattern to be honest. Isn't that interesting? So you're in this opportunity of um, innovation again. Mm-hmm. And it, just this morning, I needed a little a little um, reminder of that a humble pie. I, I was listening a little bit to Gary Vaynerchuk, who is, I mean, he just says it as it is, but it is, it's this real reminder that he said in, you know, 2021 and 2022, if you're constantly not innovating because of the change in the industry and the technology, you're going to be left behind. So I'm wondering, this is a new norm because I've had to do the same thing. And I'm noticing so many of the people that I work with and, and people that I talk to are having to do the same. So maybe you just, this, we don't like it, but it's an uncertainty, but also an opportunity to just completely, completely innovate. Right. Yeah. So I, I'm curious, um, we can shop online. We, yeah. we can shop in stores. We can also shop on Amazon, which is, which is amazing. Um, well, so- I, I did pull out of Amazon. So you did? Yes, I do have my website, cocobianut.com. And then Lunds and Byerly's, Kowalski's, uh, Fresh Time. So yeah, they all carry. That is just absolutely incredible. So I promise I'm gonna I'm gonna go. And I, even though I don't, I'm not a I, don't, um, I have allergies to nuts. But oh, I'm, okay. I'm gonna hold up the thing and we're gonna screenshot it when I go uh, to a store next time. But where you know what what could we do for you right now? People who are watching this currently watching it on Facebook or people who are going to be later on watching it on bazillion other channels. We're gonna uh, share this on. Oh, you know, it, it's such an inspiring story to me and it's such a great product for all of us who are wanting to be mindful about health. But wh- how can we support you besides spreading the word and buying the product? Um, gosh, you know, I think um, it's more like kind of like you said, being visible on social media is really important. So um yeah, spreading the word and talking about it, like you said, but um, I, you know, I always appreciate a post or if anybody really likes it and tries it and, you know, they want to, you know, take a picture of a bowl of yogurt that they're eating with it or something. Um, I would love that. That'd be great um, because pr- people promoting it is the best promotion. So, and I thank you so much for doing this. Like, this is really, you know, great. Oh, it's so such- great. A pleasure and such an honor to be able to do that. So folks, if you're listening to this, coconut and bean, you have to have it in your kitchen because I I, I know I will and we're going to share and, and support Catherine in this venture. If, if that's the, the least we can do, I mean, I know that we can do it. And why I love these Thank conversations you. is that, um, you know, I've been studying so much the energy and how it relates in quantum uh, mechanics and quantum physics. Mm-hmm. Beautiful energy of giving out. So energy cannot be trapped, so I can just change form. It doesn't. It doesn't go out. But there's this beautiful energy of giving and supporting and supporting others mm-hmm. that always blesses us, and it blesses everyone around us. And we live in this community. We live like we, we live. We live in the same circle. Yeah. So we continue to do that. It's this incredible energetic boomerang without expecting it, just doing it. That that warms my heart. So I offer yeah. uh, a challenge for for everyone today that we do that, that we bless others, and that we support Catherine and Coconut and Bean, so that it does become Spanx of granola. I I've said it. I've just called it, and I'm gonna hold <laughs> the intention for you. Thank you so much. That means yeah. the world. So I appreciate it. I love it. Thank you so much for taking the time to tell us about yourself and the company. And uh, we're going to be tagging you in the coming uh, days and weeks. And so you can see this and sharing. But thank you so much. And folks, please help support Catherine and Coco. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye, Bye. Thank you.